Now we discuss graph coloring again, only this time we are going to focus on a particular theorem from graph coloring called Brooks theorem, which gives another upper bound on the chromatic number of a graph. And here it is, Brooks theorem. If G is a connected graph and chi of G is either is the max degree plus one, then G is either an odd cycle or a complete graph. That's what this says in English. In other words, if you have a connected graph and it's not complete and it's not an odd cycle, then the chromatic number is at most the max degree. So if you might remember last time, delta of g plus 1 was an upper bound. Here we've strengthened the upper bound by noting exactly when equality holds. It's only for two special cases. In all other cases, the, you can do better. You can use one less color. And the reason why this holds is because the chromatic number of the complete graph is n. When you've got n vertices and all possible edges, you actually need n colors because every vertex has to have a distinct color. But the max degree is n minus 1 because every vertex is adjacent to n minus 1 neighbors. Likewise, for the odd cycle, every vertex is adjacent to two vertices, so the max degree is 2. And the chromatic number is 3, as we've seen before. If you try to alternate red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, the last vertex can't be colored red or blue, so you need a third color. And so in these two cases, the chromatic number is the max degree plus 1. And I'll give some overview of an attempt at a proof, but I'm not going to give the full details, just enough to give an idea for how to color using max degree many colors. But it's worth pointing out, there's a paper called Brooks Theorem and Beyond, available in the archive by Cranston and Rayburn. It has seven different proofs of this theorem. So, yeah, if you really want to know how true the theorem is true, it's apparently very true. So here's an attempt at trying to apply the theorem. This is the famous Peterson graph. And it's certainly not complete. It is connected. And we see that the max degree is 3 because the degree of every vertex is 3. And so that means, theoretically, we should be able to color this in at most three colors. We note, of course, it's not bipartite because we see on the outside we've got this 5 cycle. And so we see that the chromatic number is certainly strictly bigger than 2, and so that tells us by Brooks' theorem that the chromatic number is exactly 3, without actually finding the coloring. But let's try to find the coloring, because for the homework I actually want us to find colorings. But it's worth pointing out you could also use theorems to get this result. So let's start coloring by coloring the outside 5 cycle. We know we're going to have to alternate red and blue until we reach this third vertex. This third vertex, I mean fifth vertex, has to be colored a different color. The third color is green. And so there we go. Now let's go ahead and color the inside star. Uh, let's color the vertex adjacent to green. Well, it has no other neighbors that are colored, so we could pick any color we want. So let's go ahead and just try blue for right now. Now we've got this vertex that's between two blue vertices. We can use whatever color we want. Let's go ahead and use red. This other vertex is adjacent to a blue vertex and a red vertex, so we must use green. So let's use green. And then this vertex here is adjacent to a red and a green one, so it must be colored blue. So let's use blue. And now we see that we are forced to color the last vertex green. And so now we have a three coloring of the Peterson graph. And that's exactly what the bound told us we should get. And so that's it for those who want to do homework. The goal is to try to find the minimum number of colors. And one way to do it is to try to at least get this upper bound by using delta G many colors. And oftentimes just coloring in some order might work. So one obvious question to ask is what ordering on vertices should you use to color? So what I've been doing is called the greedy algorithm. The idea is you order the vertices in some order and at each 
point in the ordering, you use the smallest color available. And if your graph is not regular, i.e. the max degree is not equal to the min degree, then one ordering is to order vertices by decreasing degree, and that's guaranteed to work, because the idea is that uh, when you color the large degree vertices, they has uncolored neighbors. So you're in some sort of situation where you've got some of the neighbors are colored, but some of them are not. And because it has at most delta G neighbors, the fact that one neighbor is not colored guarantees that not all possible colors have been used, so there should be a color available. And the fact that the degrees decrease means that by the time you reach the end, on the very last vertex might be something like degree 1 or degree 2. And so it's guaranteed at that point to have, while all of its neighbors are colored, it has fewer neighbors than colors available, so there's still a color left over to color it with. It's guaranteed to work. Unfortunately, this doesn't work if your graph is regular. And then the a theorem of Lavash says that you should be able to find a path of length 2, u, v, and w, where u and w are not adjacent, so that when you delete u and w, you still get a connected graph. This theorem relies on the fact that your graph is not complete and not an odd cycle. And then his approach is that you should order your vertices so that u and w come first, v goes last, and then you order away from V so that you have a connected subgraph. And so let's try that. So here's an example of such a graph. You see that the uh, here I actually labeled U V W. If you delete U and W, you still have a connected graph. And U and W aren't adjacent, and this graph is three regular. Every vertex is degree three. And so my ordering says that I should put U and W first and V last, and then order connected vertices from away from V. So this vertex goes last, then these two, and then these two. And so you order it in that order, and then you color, starting from U and W. And what happens when you do this is you're guaranteed that U and W have to get the same color because they're not adjacent. And then we color 5. Well, 5 can't be colored red, so we have to color it blue. 4 is adjacent to red vertex and a blue vertex, so it must be colored green. And it's worth noting, the reason there's a color available is because 4 is adjacent to a vertex that hasn't been colored yet. So we are guaranteed that we've only used up at most two colors, so green is available. Now we color 3. 3 is adjacent to red and a blue as well, so 3 gets colored with green. Now we color 2. 2 is adjacent to red and a blue. We're guaranteed it has a color available. Finally, we color 1. 1 is adjacent to a green and a blue, and so red is the only color available for it. And finally, we color V. In the worst case scenario, V neighbors uh, the way this is chosen, V has two neighbors that have the exact same color, U and W, and so at most, delta minus one colors are used on its neighbors, in this case actually only one color, and so there ends up being a color available, so this always works. The hard part, of course, is finding such a construction, but it's guaranteed to exist, and so this gives you a way to color a regular graph using delta colors, as long as it's not an odd cycle or a complete graph. And so this is one way to do it, but in general, ordering by decreasing degree also works, if that's an option. Of course, none of these tell you how to color the graph with delta minus 1 colors. That's actually an open conjecture that if the degree max degree is at least 9, then with the exception of one graph, you can color with delta minus 1 colors. It's been an open conjecture since 1977. So here's one of the big conjectures from 1977. If the max degree is at least nine and the largest clique is delta minus one because obviously if your clique number is delta you can't get the chromatic number any higher then the chromatic number is at most delta minus one and the reason for this nine is because of this graph you take your five cycle you replace each vertex with a triangle and you replace each of these edges with a complete bipartite graph 
remember you've already replaced one vertex with three, one vertex with three, so you have three and three. And it turns out you can prove that this, these vertices have degree eight because this vertex is three edges coming from this bipartite graph, three edges from this bipartite graph, and then two edges from this triangle, so the max degree is eight. Moreover, the, there turns out there are no, uh, there are no seven cliques because if you take any two of these vertices together and you look at the replaced vertices, you get a clique of size six because you know these edges are actually in here. But then in order to get a clique of size seven, you have to add one more vertex. It has to come from one of these vertex clouds. And then at that point, you have a non-adjacency. And so the clique number is six. And so it certainly satisfies this bound. And so then this theorem ends up being false in this case. You actually do need all eight colors, which is hard to prove. The other famous conjecture is due to read, which is that the chromatic number is bounded above by this linear combination. As remember, we saw last time that the chromatic number is between the clique number and the max degree plus one, that's a trivial bound. What this conjecture is saying is that it's actually closer to the clique number than it is to the max degree, because this is the midpoint of the it interval on the real number line created by these two numbers. And no one has any idea how to prove either of these, but they're kind of nice. So we have nice proofs for delta colorings at the very least, which is good enough for finding small colorings, but in general, Reducing the number of colors is a very hard problem, leading into very open research areas.